are back for another exciting weekend of racing here at Gulfstream Park. That's beautiful Gulfstream Park. Friday and Saturday and Sunday this week. We've got a fast main track, Fern Turf course. And what an exciting weekend we had with the Rainbow Six mandatory payout on Monday, Labor Day, Katie. Uh, and it was exciting. They bet over $2 million into it. Not only did they bet more than $2 million into it, there was no single, but it still paid more than $260,000 to multiple winners. Well, we got mandatory payouts and everything, so today we're starting anew a with uh, new Rainbow Six, which starts in race number five. It goes uh, to race number ten, so uh, we'll start anew. Somebody, as you mentioned, a bunch of, a few people had it for $261,000 plus, so very exciting. And uh, before we get into the Friday card, we have a ten race card today. We're going to see what's uh, out there in the Twitter land, and the first horse we want to talk about is our buddy Wise Dan, who's been retired boy but what a nice horse he was this i believe is from last week yeah these are these not are, these are not the correct the wrong. up here well we're um, going to talk about wise dan. wise dan he was retired and uh just you know they were pointing him for his comeback he'd been off he had a fracture they took his time with him and uh you know he ultimately injured a tendon. They had to retire him and did right by the horse. I wanted to show a tweet. Uh, Ray Pollock said, if they tell you that they don't make racehorses like they used to, take a look at Wise Day. And I believe 23 victories, 12 grade ones. What an unbelievable animal. Yeah, so uh, Wise Day, I don't know if we're having problems with our tweets. So uh, we don't have them. So we will go on and get right into the Friday card. As I mentioned, a fast main track, a firm turf course. And our first race will be on the turf, Take Katie. Five furlongs, claim is three and up. $12,500, full field of nine runners in here and both Katie and I have the course that's currently even money and that is the number eight it's time to laugh well he's seeking back-to-back -back victories today for trainer David Casson cut back from a mile last time out stopped the pace scored a very nice victory Edgar Prado gonna keep them out today and this horse has just really been in good form since getting back on the turf in July he even ran a really nice second when only beating a length going five eighths yeah this uh, it looks like the logical one in there we have our second and third selections the flip-flop I use the nine starships Sulu in second plunge into this twelve thousand five hundred dollar level returned from a layoff to stalk the pace and weaken that was a twenty five thousand dollar optional claimer at this distance the trainer Sally Mitchell Hill has Edgar Zayas. I just thought this was the logical pace setter, and you never know in the first race, and as we tell you all the time, watch how these uh, turf races play early on the day before you put your tickets together later on. The horse that used in second, I used the third, and third was the number three, and that is Startup. Well, if you like, it's time to laugh. You should like Startup. He was only a length and three quarters behind It's Time to Laugh last time out. He finished third that day and closed very, very well. Yeah, and uh, trainer Fergus Bogle has Tyler Gaffley own handle in that rematch this afternoon but I think we have the right horse with its uh, eight number eight it's time to lap the second race this afternoon is six furlongs claimers we're moving to the fast main track for the second race these are three and up six thousand two hundred fifty dollars looks like the scratch bird uh, got uh, in here and we got a scratch of the one the number two and the number eight that's dangerous trick DNA approved and number eight CD gold so five horse field in here Katie you went with the number seven smoking the field I went with Pecorino we're flip-flopped here why'd you go with these seven on top Lots of scratches, like you mentioned, but not of my top selection. I stayed with smoking the field throughout. And this one, he was third, only beaten a length and three quarters, going seven eighths last time out. It was at this level. He's going to turn back to three quarters of a mile today for Gilberto Zerpa. He's had to really run with some tough competitors at this level. He's really held his own. And I thought today, especially with the scratches, he's facing an easier group, and he becomes the horse to beat. But Pecorino, he's been running lights out. I was just concerned with the short turnaround. Yeah, the short turnaround. But I, I think that, you know, smoke in the field is a logical choice in here, but he likes to come from off the pace, and I think they got rid of most of the speed in this race, so it becomes a really wide open affair, and Pecorino on top, he's uh, had three races at this distance with the two wins and a second, so three for three in the money, claimed him back-to-back -back races, hoping to get back to the winner's circle, that two-race win streak ended when he finished second, that was on a sealed sloppy track last time out, uh, the new trainer is Antonio Sano, he's excellent with new claims, 32% in here, uh, Tyler Gaffleone in the saddle, but I think you 
to box those two and exact the box in this particular race. The other horse I threw in, uh, Katie, was the five, Pe Beantown Skipper. I lost, uh, you know, my third pick in there, which was Dangerous Trick. This one maybe can show some speed when he turns back today to three quarters of a mile. If you look through his past performance, has shown some speed at times when he's going shorter. And when he's in form, he's really in good form. He's going to look to rebound. I thought the same of Helper Rye. He was fourth last time out at this distance. And with the scratches, he can definitely be a factor. Well, let's go to race number three. And by the way, that second race uh, starts the first of two pick fours in the afternoon. So with only five horses, maybe hit the all button in there. Number th Race number three is a one-mile claimer. Phillies advance three and up. Non-winners of three races in life or three-year-olds. $12,500. Six horses will go to the post in here. And Katie and I... I both have number one, Mimi's Dream on top of the ticket. It's cutting back to a one-turn mile today. Yeah, and making the turf-to-dirt move for trainer Marcelo Cuito. Fifth on the grass at the $16,000 level last time out. She's only beaten a neck at this level and distance on the main track. Two starts back. And that came when she was also making the turf to dirt move. So this move has worked well for her. And I think she has an excellent shot today. Yeah, we got our second and thirds flip-flopped again in the second consecutive race. I had Faith Hall in second. Should have the uh, screws tightened this afternoon. Returned from that six-month layup. Two for the lead. Hold on to finish third as the odds-on choice. Behind who? Mimi's dream last time out. Kathleen O'Connell, Eduardo Nunez in the saddle. Tormenta de Oro is the other horse that we use. She's seeking her third straight victory and making her first start off the claim for trainer Louis Duco. Stretched up, stepped up, and stretched out off her 10 and a quarter length maiden breaking score to win at this distance last time out on August 14th. That was over a surface labeled as good. And Louis Duco, I looked at the trainer standings, he's in third. He's in third this Having a year. great meet. Yeah, great and meet. Uh, Ralph Nix and uh, Antonio Sano battling. I think they won a part going into today. So fun uh, trainer standings in here. As I mentioned, Louis Duco having a great summer campaign. Uh, third right now, I believe, we're tied for third in the trainer standings. Let's go to race number four. Seven and a half furlongs on the turf. Maiden Phillies, two-year-olds. We do have one uh, equipment note, the number six, Panetta. We'll race with blinkers on this afternoon. We want to go back and show you the performance, the course that, that Katie has on the ticket along with me. I have it in third. She has in its second, and that is previous version who shows a, a couple of useful half mile works after an interesting performance. Yeah, well, she completely missed the break last time out, and then talk about going wide. She's not even close to the field here, and she drifts out even farther on the turn. Just looks like she's not even controllable in this race. The rider just did not have a good handle on her. She's still wide. I would love to see the track as data for this race of how much extra ground that she covered that day. That being said, I do not have her on top in this race. But I think she can really improve today, especially since Edgar Prado is going to get the call today. When he replaced Apprentices aboard a ward horse on Saturday, he also won an immediate <laughs> special weight with revolver sessions. Well, I went back and looked at the stats, and I, I was like, what? He's 7 for 10, Edgar Prado, when he rides for Wesley Ward. So uh, keep that in mind. That is incredible. That's 70%. I can do the math on that one pretty easily. But we both went with the number 9 in here. Tisbo, excuse me while my mic uh, slides off. Tisbo are now in the Joe Hennessy barn. It's a daughter of Tis now and a half-sister to Sunshine. Philly and Mad Turf win a pink poppy. Turning back today to seven and a half furlongs after recovering from it. Had a little trouble at the start. Hit the gate in that race. Finished second. It was a one-mile debut on the turf. Certainly has the breeding to show that she's going to like the turf. And she proved it last time out. I really liked the way she ran. And I was pretty impressed just because she way she dueled and was able to hold on for a second when debuting in a route. So I think she can definitely build off of that performance. Well, the horse I put in second in here was the one Mazzi who has speed, the rail, and a chance to make every call a winning one or at least secure that stalking uh, position uh, near the front end. Trainer Manny Espor has the services of a uh, board Eddie Castro has been on fire the last couple of weeks, yes. so he's uh, in the saddle. Inside speed here, we mentioned in that first race, you can watch the turf course, see how everything plays out. Maybe a horse, if you're interested in speed, you go with the number one, Masio. You also went with the number five horse on your ticket, Tizjet. I think she's really going to improve with a stretched out today. It really looked like she wanted to go long last time out. Made up ground to finish fifth in her turf debut. That was when she went five furlongs. Edgar Zayas is going to ride for Antonio Sano. We're going to go to the fifth race this afternoon. We mentioned we're starting the Rainbow Six anew here after a fantastic weekend where some lucky patrons got $261,000 plus. 
your chance to do it right here again. It'll be building, but you know what? On the first day, recently, we've hit it a couple of times on the first day, and it's paid like seventeen, twenty thousand dollars $20,000. So it's a good day to play the Rainbow Six. This one, six furlongs, maiden claimers. These are two-year-olds, $25,000. Scratch the number four. Want to follow me? I went with the one in here. I'll start it. Partagas way. I think Believe is sitting on a winning performance after the promising career debut at this level and distance, in which he made progress along the inside when finished third, going five-eighths of a mile. Louis Oliveira's limited amount of starters. He's two for seven thus far, 29%. Uh, has Jonathan Gonzalez in handling a stretch out for six rollings. I, I like that performance last time out. I, I know he's six to one on the morning line, fourth choice. I think he has a good shot in here, but I can understand you putting a nine on here who I did not use, who's three to one on the morning line, second choice. Yeah, this is Morzano for Sano. Antonio Sano going to make two key changes with the son of hat trick. Going to return him to the maiden claiming ranks. He's running for career low today and putting him back on the dirt. He did not really move around much. He finished in mid-pack last time out on the grass in a maiden special weight. But in his career debut, I thought he finished well to get up for third when going five-eighths on the main track against $50,000 maiden claimers. So perfectly spotted today. And Andy Hernandez, that's Harry Hernandez's <laughs> dad, he's going to be riding. And he got his first win here at Gulfstream last week. Yeah, and he's got a really long name. And they always cut it off in the program. We've got to talk to them about that. But Andy Hernandez is Harry's father. So Harry out for a little while. Got, got a broken wrist, I believe it was, or something like that. And yes. should be back in a couple of months or uh, thereabout. Uh, the horse that we both put in second. And I know why I put it in second. And I'm thinking Katie did the same reason. because it's been the pay beaten favorite in three consecutive yep. raise-up. Comes off its best effort yet when finishing second at this level and distance. Uh, Stevie DeMar is the trainer. Juan Labor trying to remedy uh, that the chalk burning stuff. I think he's at his best at this distance as well. Seemed to respond to the stretch out last time, but again, favored in each of his last three starts. He's finished third, fourth, and second. Well, we both used a eight, Alex the Dude. Alex the Dude. I love that name. He, he's, <laughs> he's been fourth beaten and ironically identical eight and a quarter lengths in each of his last two starts, but he's running for a great barn who should know him better when starting him for just the second time. Yeah, so we'll see how that race plays out. Uh, yeah, as you can see, that's the first leg of the race. Rainbow Six and Katie and I differ there, so you might want to go a little deep or if you agree with one of us. And you know what? Friday, but we have stakes action today. We have a turf uh, race, five furlongs on the grass, fillies and mares, three-year-olds and up. It is the hard worker named after Katie, I believe, in here. A couple of scratch in here, the four Ocean Air Girl, the six Creative License. Want to go back and show you a performance of the eight horse in here today. Zam Quick uh, on that day was the four. Closed pretty nicely. I don't think anyone works harder than you can <laughs> run. We'll take a look. This is the Bougain Viet Handicap, and I wanted to take a look at my top selection in here, Zam Quick. Coming from off the pace, this is her first start for the Ralph Nix barn, and she's going to swing out six wide here. Take a look at how far out in the center of the racetrack she is. She's going to finish a gaining third. It just keeps coming. I like the way she closes. Actually ends up switching back to her left lead and switching back to the right lead a few times here, but actually gets up for third in this race, and I think with the way this race is shaping out on paper with all of the speed it's going to set up for her and she's going to, I'm going to look to beat the favorite here, looks like you are too in our free roll. Yeah, you know, our free roll is a logical choice but the other speed in there, perfect step who I did put on top, our free roll, our Liberty Bay, look like they all want to be on the engine, yeah. might set up perfectly for Zamquick and I really struggle between picking Zamquick and the one perfect step who you have in third, this one's turning back to five furlongs again, ten starts at the distance, five wins three seconds in the third, after post Posting her third consecutive turf victory when using her speed to defeat $35,000 optional claimers. That was going around two turns, seven and a half furlongs. Peter Walder, Edgar Prado trying to make it four in a row on the local turf course. And I think the turn back is a key move for her. But you're right about number two, our free roll. Looks on paper the one to beat. Absolutely. But just on perfect step, I wasn't sure how she was going to handle that stretch out last time. Right. She did it easily, really mm -hmm. in the best form of this group. So I can see why you put her on top here. But our free Roll is your eight to five morning line favorite. She has dangerous trademark speed. They're going to catch her to beat her. But again, Ron and I both seem to think she's going to have a lot of company on that front end today. Won the Tiger Lily handicap in her turf debut, went wire to wire. The top was two starts back. Then she went back to the dirt. She is a grade two winner on dirt right. in the Princess Rooney. You know, it was just a little bit much for her. 
But uh, we'll see how she does switching surfaces again. Yeah, look at the, the fraction she set in the Tiger Lily. 20 and 3, 42 and 4 en route to that victory. So this horse has some devastating speed uh, going to the turf today, 5 eighths of, from, for five eighths of a mile. Very, very dangerous. If this horse somehow gets an easy lead, the dance can be over very early. Let's go to race number 7 today. Five and a half furlongs. Claim is two year olds, $35,000. Clean slate, seven runners in the race, no scratches, a jockey changes. Katie and I have the same exact exacta, the number six Bon Voyage, a new gelding. Well, we're going to be hoping that our free roll is not saying Bon Voyage <laughs> to the field today right. in the hard worker. Bon Voyage, I like him in this race. He failed to fire in his career debut on Summit of Speed Day. He was favored in a maiden special weight, but he dominated on the drop down in his second start, romped by eight lengths in his second start for Wesley Ward and Red Oak Stable. And he defeated another horse in here that we both have on the ticket. That's Turkey Ridge. He would come back to break his own maiden in his next start. Yeah, we mentioned earlier the uh, wins between Ward and Prado when they hook up together 7 for 10 uh, recently. So Turkey Ridge, as you mentioned, turning back to 5.5, following the third place finish behind Bon Voyage, going five furlongs, comes back and really uh, scores by about four lengths against $35,000 maidens, going seven furlongs. It was on a wet track list that is good. Ralph Nix, son of High Cotton, working well for the rematch this afternoon. He is. We'll see if he can turn the tables, and the key is, really both of them have showed good early speed in winning their respective races so are they both going to go and who's going to outlast the other and you use the five title fight on your ticket he could sit the, the trip if the pace gets too hot in here he won his debut in a fifty thousand dollar maiden claimer for trainer steve tomorrow before being out finished when he's stepping up to stakes company in the florida sire stakes dr fager but he turned in a bullet to tune up for this as well so should be sharp yeah and the same thing with the bizarre surprise bizarre surprise number seven horse, another impressive maiden winner. So this race on paper is pretty tough. We both settled on the six Bon Voyage, but there's a couple of horses in here, especially the five and the seven that come off impressive maiden victories that can certainly make it two in a row. Race number eight this afternoon, uh, five furlongs on the turf, claim is three and up, non-winners of two in life, full field, nine runners in here. I went with the four, remembering Richie. You went with the horse I have in second, and that is Super See Me. We've got the same three horses in here, and they all figure in this race. I took Super see me because he was claimed out of his maiden break in victory back in May by trainer George Navarro. He prevailed by a neck in his turf sprinting debut that day. Navarro 40% first off the claim when returning horses from a 61 to 180 day layoff in claiming races. That was a statistic I couldn't ignore and three of this horse's previous, his last six works, three of those have been bullets. Of course town at Goldstein Park West which really legs the horses up well here. I did go with the four remembering Richie on top stepping up to the next logical level used his speed to defeat $35,000 maidens here on June 12th Dave Braddy 21% with his turf sprinters Edgar Zayas going for two in a row it's a tough jump up I just thought it might be the logical horse in here but I got to use the one super see me and we both use the number three better run real fast and that's good for this horse she better run real fast in here I'm in complete agreement there Ron this one's going to run for a tag when facing winners for the first time for trainer Kathleen O'Connell broke his maiden in a maiden special weight on August 13th, so seems to be well spotted today. Well, let's go right to race number nine. Six furlong allowance optional claim at three and up $16,000. Jockey on the five horses, Sonny Leon, scratch the number six, Diabolical IPA. Want to go back and show you a horse that turned out to be my best bet on the afternoon, and that is uh, number eight, Focus on Me. So let's focus on this horse's last race. We shall. This is Focus on Me, drawing off to win by a pretty easy four and a half lengths in an optional claimer on August 22nd, or 27th rather. David Braddy, he's really doing a fantastic job of spotting this son of Ken Tharos. He was fourth, but only beaten two lengths in the Florida Sire Stakes unbridled division. Two starts back at seven furlongs, cut back to three quarters of a mile, and was a very nice winner that day. Yeah, I just think he spotted perfectly in here. We have the same trifecta in here. I used the nine, and so did Katie. Color me pom pom. Turning back today to this six furlong distance after stalking the pace, finishing third. That was against state bred competition. That was in the seven furlong Jackson Bend last time out. Terry Pompey, Tyler Gaffleone in the saddle this afternoon. And we both used the four. Hector's Pride. 
Well, he defeated Color Me Pom Pom in June before finishing second to the well meant Hear That Tune. But he faltered last time out as the favorite, which is why I had Color Me Pom Pom above him today. Yeah, and he, you know, I think he got mired down in the rail last time out, and I think he can run much better this afternoon. It's the four hectares pride. I think we got the logical three horses in here. Once again, the jockey on the five is Sunny Leon. Scratched the number six horse in that race. Final race of the afternoon is five furlongs on the turf. These are maiden claimers, fillies and mares, three and up, $12,500. Clean slate, nine runners for the Super High Five. Once again, we had the mandatory payout on the Super High Five. We're starting anew with that today. And both Katie and I have the number four, Bam Bam, right on top of our ticket. When she debuted for the Alan Mirage Barn, I really liked what she did. She made a four-wide bid to get up for second, only missed by a length and a quarter. And that came off more than a three-month layoff, and she produced a career-best effort that day from a buyer perspective. It was also her turf sprinting debut, so I definitely think she's found her strength and the appropriate spot where she belongs should break through today. Well, number five, you feel this, Cornelius, is hoping to stretch her speed to the wire after getting tired during the stretch run and finishing third, second, second, third. Third and second in a five previous turf sprint that's this level and distance. Uh, uh, I just can't put her on top of the ticket because of that reason. I couldn't either. I feel the exact same way. She's been favored in three of her last four, and like you mentioned, she's hit the board each of those times. So put her on your super high five ticket somewhere, but she hasn't been able to come out with a win. You also used the number nine in here, and that is Spring Me. Well beaten off a two month layoff when returning when running on the dirt last time out. Going to return to the turf today and should improve by leaps and bounds. Three starts back in her turf sprinting debut. She was third, only beaten two lengths. You use, though, the seven circle of trust. Yeah, it's a late striding daughter of Candy Rider can benefit. You know, with these races, a lot of times you have a really fast pace up front. I think this horse, like you said, should be on your super high five ticket, not on the top of the big somewhere. Then, uh, you know, can close. Uh, trainer's Mike Love has journeyman Gary Bain in the saddle. I think this is a horse that, you know, you got to pick the first five finishes. If you look at this horse's last race, I think it deserves a spot somewhere on that super high five ticket. Deservingly so and always got a root for Gary Bain in the yeah, saddle. Yeah, I got a root for Gary Payne. Uh, he's uh, getting up there in age, but he always uh, in great form and does a uh, great shape and does great, uh, loves to ride. So that's good to see him. I uh, hope he gets a win today. So that's how we see the Friday card. Ten races. Don't forget we got that stake race in race number six. Should be a fun day of racing throughout the day. Should be and another beautifully sunny day here in South Florida. Good luck, everybody.